Is it more efficient to drive with one pedal drive turned on or off or a little bit of both? Let's find out. Dylan and I are out here uh, with our Chevy Bolt, that is Dylan's daily driver, to do a test that uh, he suggested uh, when we did our uh, review video on the car of is it better to do to leave one pedal drive turned on or turned off. So uh, the first thing that we have to uh, go through is what is one pedal drive? Or I'll also known as regenerative braking. So regenerative braking is a feature common to electric vehicles where the, the energy of the motor and just releasing uh, the, the accelerator, uh, it uses the, the motor's own energy to slow the car down and in turn it puts energy back into the battery. Now one pedal drive is a way where that's a little bit more automatic, where when you lift your foot off of the accelerator, the car starts slowing down as if it's braking. Now our Chevy Bolt has that feature, our Fiat does not, our Tesla does, the Harley does, uh, but it's not true of all electric vehicles. Our Fiat 500e doesn't have it. But this car does, and it also has the advantage of being able to turn it on or off at the press of a button. Yes. And it also has this little feature on the steering wheel that's called a regen on demand paddle. How often do you use that? I usually go for the paddle first and only hit the actual mechanical brake uh, when I really need to. The main advantage of relying on the regenerative braking is to reduce your long-term maintenance costs because the less you use the mechanical brakes, the less frequently you need to replace your brake pads. Regenerative braking, it is an inarguable feature and benefit is that the brake pads on the car last a lot longer than if you were using friction brakes only. Uh, we bought our Fiat with close to, to uh, 40,000 miles on it and I saw the brake pads and they looked brand new and even though it doesn't have one pedal driving it does have regenerative braking uh, so with doing that you, you save yourself brake pads and a considerable amount of money in brake pads so here's what we're going to do we're going to do a short little loop and we're going to do it three times we're going from our house to a shopping center that's 12 and a half miles away and that's going to use a combination of county roads with a speed limit between 30 and 40 miles per hour and about six miles of toll road at 70 miles per hour and then that'll reverse going back so it's a 25 mile round trip the first time we're going to do that we're going to have one pedal drive turned on the whole time the second time we're going to turn one pedal drive off the whole time the third time we're going to leave one pedal drive on on the lower speed county roads and then turn it off when we're on the higher speed toll road and see which one gives us the best efficiency number. I know it's not ideal because we're only putting 25 miles on the trip odometer each time, which we will reset the trip odometer at the start of each loop to get a reading, but uh, we don't really want to spend all day doing this either. So uh, this is probably going to take us a, few, a couple of hours to get this done, but um, We'll, we'll report those numbers back to you. We're gonna get started on our run with one pedal drive on. Trip is reset. Car has just barely been running. Coming up on the end of our section of County Road, 5.4 miles and our average efficiency so far 4.7 miles per kilowatt hour with one pedal driving turned on. On our leg with one pedal drive on, 12 and a half miles, 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. We've used 3.3 kilowatt hours so far and for those of you who care, it's 78 degrees.
We've finished our first run with one pedal drive turned on the entire time. It was exactly 25.0 miles. Our average efficiency was 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour, and the car so far on this uh, on this total charge has used 6.5 kilowatt hours. We're gonna turn it off, get something uh, to drink inside the house, and then uh, we will do the round uh, that route again with one pedal drive completely turned off. If you're driving a car with one pedal drive and you're driving it for the first time, sometimes it, people say it feels a little weird. No, that's gonna take some getting used to. In my experience, it takes about 30 seconds to get used to one pedal drive and then you just expect it. What takes me when I'm driving the car more time to get used to is going back to a vehicle that doesn't have it. Uh, come up to a stop, I let off the accelerator and say, why isn't the car slowing down? Oh yeah, I have to hit the brakes. So uh, Dylan, what do you have to say about anything on this drive without one pedal drive on? So when you're driving like a regular ICE car or a car that doesn't have one pedal drive, you can either be accelerating or decelerating. You're either moving forward or you're slowing to a stop. I hit the mic a little bit there, but uh, when you have regen on, there's sort of like a third uh, speed in the middle there where you decelerate not quite as rapidly as if you were hitting the brake. It, in a gas car, if you just take your foot off the brake, your momentum and the friction of the road will slow you down like a little bit, but it's not gonna put you to a stop before you hit the car that you're about to hit. Uh, regen can feel awkward to people who aren't used to it. You said it doesn't take you much time. I didn't take me much time to get used to it either, but my fiance, as always, as an Android user, is a great control. He hates the one pedal. He drives with the one pedal off all the time. He finds it unnatural that it is slowing down not as quickly as he would want it to. Since I've gotten used to the regenerative braking, um, I'm sort of having to be more aware of where the momentum of my car is taking me. <laughs> uh, so I'm getting a little bit jerky at the stop signs, but that's EV driver issues, not issues with the actual vehicle. When I'm at work and there's a bunch of us going to lunch and I'll drive somebody in the car with me, they'll comment about how smooth the car is, especially this Bolt with one pedal drive turned on of just you get so used to it, you just let off the, the, the accelerator before a stop sign or a stop light and you know exactly when the car is going to stop and it, you don't even get the rebound. The car just slows down and stops moving and it's so smooth. But with the braking, yeah, it's a, it's a little rougher. Uh, on the Fiat, the, our Fiat 500e uses regenerative braking above eight miles per hour and below eight miles per hour, it engages the friction brakes and the actual brake pads. And slowing for a stop sign on that one, I could always tell when the friction brakes grabbed because I would have my foot on the brake a little too much and it would jerk me a little bit to a stop. Now, Rachel probably has gotten that down to a science and doesn't have that issue, but I still do. I'm no longer used to that car. Here we are at the end of the county road section and we're at 4.9 miles per kilowatt hour. I think that's a little higher than it was before. Halfway point without one pedal drive on, we are at 12.5 miles again, 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Total energy is 9.8 kilowatt hours, and for those who care, it's 81 degrees. So we're at the end of our run with one pedal drive turned off the whole time. Uh, same 25 miles, our efficiency is down by a tenth to 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour. And our energy usage since our last charge is showing 13.1 
kilowatt hours. Now I think we'd already used uh, 0.1 kilowatt hours or 100 watt hours before we put the car in drive. So that looks somewhere between 100 and 200 more watt hours over the course of those 25 miles without one pedal drive turned on. The temperature variance has been two degrees, 79 degrees up to 81 degrees. Now what we're going to do next is because of a commenter named Steve Rowe, who said, great idea, Dylan, on the comparison of one pedal drive versus regular. I think you'll find a huge difference between those two modes on highway versus city driving. One pedal is great in stop and go, and it's really bad to leave on when you're on the freeway. So what we're gonna do on this third is during our county road run, we're going to leave one pedal drive turned on, and then when we get on the toll road, we're going to turn it off, and we're going to see what that does to our efficiency. We're on that third, uh, leg right now. We've got the trip odometer reset. We've got one pedal drive turned back on. We've got Fiona with us in the car now because she just really wanted to have a car ride. Uh, and I double checked my footage uh, by just playing it back on my phone. And yes, we did start with uh, having used 100 watt hours or 0.1 kilowatt hours before we started that first, uh, that first leg of the trip. So uh, that means with one pedal drive, that 25 miles used 6.4 kilowatt hours, but without one pedal drive, we used 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours. So it's not much. We're talking 200 watt hours over 25 miles. We're talking one, uh, one tenth of one mile per kilowatt hour over 25 miles in terms of efficiency. It, it does give an advantage to one pedal drive, but it's, it's a small one. Um, but we were in the middle of a conversation on the last one and we were talking about uh, the car with one pedal and without one pedal. So uh, Dylan, you were gonna add some things? Well, I was just gonna say like, even though, you know, cars are, are manufactured on a line, uh, cars are gonna be different across makes and models and it's a little bit like a, like a horse, you know, you get, uh, you get acquainted with your car and the regen on the bolt is not going to be the same as it is going to feel on different EVs. So it's really just your car. You need to get a feel for it to overcome like that awkwardness. But knowing that the difference in efficiency is so negligible between having one pedal on and one pedal off, maybe I owe my fiance an apology because that's just how he prefers to drive. And uh, maybe he's not hurting my efficiency as much as I thought he was by driving with one pedal off all the time. Presumably it also improves the condition and life of the battery, but that's not a test that we're really equipped to run because we would need two of the exact same car uh, doing the one pedal on and one pedal off test for like the entire lifetime of the car until the battery died. And we don't have the time or the money to do that. So we're just gonna have to go off of the difference in efficiency and how long you can go without replacing your brake pads, which is self-evidently a massive difference. I prefer one pedal drive myself, and so it's looking like it's gonna be more. I do uh, as well, for the record. I prefer driving with one pedal as well. It, it's just gonna be a matter of driver's preference. Back at the end of our county road section, and we're still at 5.4 miles, but 4.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Temperature's gone up to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, we are getting on the tollway. I've turned one pedal drive off. And I just wanna add uh, something about why some folks might say you want to turn one pedal drive off on the highway. There's a lot of controversy about whether or not the brake lights on the bolt turn on when you're just using one pedal drive as opposed to putting your foot on the brake pedal. And it's not the brake lights, yeah, they'll come on when you put your foot on the brake pedal, but also when there's a shift in momentum, uh, when the regen starts to kick in, the brake lights will come on. With a Bolt EV, the way that the tail lights are designed, they're in the hatch so that when you open the hatch, the tail lights go with it. And uh, if you have something big in your car that you have to have the hatch open while you're driving and you've tied the hatch down, it makes it so your tail lights and your brake lights can't be seen because they're in the hatch. Uh, so because of that, the GM designers put the brake lights in the bumper, which is not um, an intuitive spot for people to look for those brake lights. You still have the third brake light up in the up in the top of the hatch, but the uh, the brake lights in the bumper. Sometimes people don't look there, 
And if bolt owners get rear-ended by somebody who says, I didn't see your brake lights, the brake lights worked. The brake lights are just down in the bumper and that's gonna be the case no matter whether you're using one pedal or if you're putting your foot on the brake pedal for stopping. At the halfway point on this leg, 12 and a half miles, 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour is our efficiency. And we've used, since the last charge, we're now at 16.4 kilowatt hours. And we are done with the toll road, so we've got one pedal drive turned back on, five more miles to go, and we'll have our conclusion. We're at the end of our third and final leg, and this time was one pedal drive on on the low speed county roads, but turned off on the highway. And at the end of that 25 miles, uh, we went up a degree in external temperature, so that's really not gonna be much of a factor. 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour, and our total energy used since our last charge was 19.7 kilowatt hours. So that is right in the middle, about what's well, the same efficiency as one pedal drive off all of the time and the same power usage of 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours for that round trip as, uh, as it was with one pedal drive off all of the time. So that little bit of an advantage that we had with one pedal drive um, turned on all the time stays the same. We lose that advantage if we turn one pedal drive off on the highway, uh, at least on this trip. Now, I know that um, I'm going to get comments about it's a 25 mile uh, round trip. You're getting, you know, 11 miles on at low speed and, 11, and the rest on the highway. It's not much. I know it's not much, but we did it over the exact same terrain. The temperature variance was three degrees Fahrenheit. That's about as much as we could control. If we try to do more miles, we lose some of, we lose some of that control. So uh, conclusions, what conclusions do we have? Uh, it's not as important for your efficiency as maybe I thought that it was but when it I is, said this was a good idea. But it's it still does, an advantage. It is an advantage. It does make, uh, it does make a, a difference, a, a little, little difference. It's a teeny tiny, it's a teeny tiny difference, uh, but it, it is close enough that it's all going to boil down to your personal driving preference. If you prefer to drive without one pedal driving uh, turned on, or if you want to alternate between having it on and off on the freeway, uh, that it's fine. It, it's not going to affect your efficiency that much or your power usage that much, at least on a daily commute. If you were going on a long trip, it, it might add one kilowatt hour for every hundred or so miles yeah. that you drive. Uh, so we've got a 2,600 mile road trip coming up at the end of the week. So what that had cost us fast charging 10 bucks. Well, you're taking over the that. For yeah. That. But I'm just saying just for, yeah. just, just for the sake of argument. So it, 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 it's a small advantage to keep one pedal drive turned on, but it's close enough to, that it really shouldn't affect how, uh, how you drive it. You drive the car how you want to drive it and you'll be fine. The important thing to consider is how comfortable you are driving the car. If you, uh, basically, if you're not comfortable with one pedal on or you're not comfortable with one pedal off, the change in efficiency is not going to be worth your comfort but I do want to reiterate that it's not so much a driver consideration as it is a consideration for your battery and your brake pads. So if you found this video informative, give us a like. If you have anything to add, go ahead and put it down into the comments. Uh, we could have done this over a longer distance, but I have to have a full-time job. I don't do this full-time. If you'd like, please subscribe. That'll, that'll help us be able to do that. Uh, tell other people to subscribe, that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.